All right, so here's the FarmerTech 440 hybrid. It's got an OEM still 460 D chamber cylinder on it, a Meteor 064 piston. Uh, we'll go over the OEM upgrade upgraded parts that I had to do on it. So OEM cap, I probably could have got away with the stock cap, but the stock cap was, um, or this this little ring in here was a little bit sharp, so it kind of cut the little ceiling gasket. So I had to put a new cap on and then I just trimmed it up with the razor blade uh, so that it was nice and smooth. I had to put a, a new little spring. It's like a little spring that makes the connection to the spark plug. I put a new one of those on because it broke when I tore it apart to port it. Uh, the other OEM upgrade is this OEM still chain adjuster. Uh, this is the only one of my former tech saws that I needed to do an OEM chain adjuster. Just the... The one that came with it wasn't very smooth and that's a pretty important piece. So I went ahead and threw an OEM chain adjuster kit in it. It's got aftermarket eBay dogs on it. I'm running this, uh, I guess it's called a West Coast side cover. You can get these on eBay, pretty cheap. I think they're made by former tech as well. Running the chain catcher. This is pretty, pretty important, pretty safe. A uh, little thing to have. So in case you throw a chain, it's not gonna Come back and hit you i'll stop the chain uh th these dogs are, are good but the problem is they are a little bit soft you can kind of see i'm gonna try to bend that back in the vise before i cut any wood with it uh, i have west coast dogs but let me pull this up i don't really like how they stick out so much farther that's another almost inch of bar that i could be using I typically like to run a little bit shorter bar. My The ones that I run the most is like a 20 and a 24. Most of the time I run a 24 on this one. Unless I'm in a uh, smaller wood, then I'll just throw a 20 on it. Um, so, yeah. So, that's uh, kind of the upgrades that I've done to it. Oh, it's also got a max flow cover for it. This is for the 440, 044. I painted it black because it can't take the dye. It doesn't accept the dye when I tried to dye it, so I just spray painted it black so it looks, uh, it matches this blue. I am currently, I'm gonna clean this filter up and put it back together and go do a little cutting this afternoon. So one little tip here is this here gets all dirty because of the max flow oil that you gotta oil this filter with. So I just take this whole piece off. I clean this uh, up when it's away from the carburetor you know, off of the saw. And then I just put it back on and throw a little little Loctite, just a teeny bit. Uh, since these nuts here have, you can see that's, uh, they're like lock nuts. So I just throw a little bit of Loctite on there um, to make sure that it doesn't, it doesn't vibrate off and yeah. Uh, so let's go over the port work next. Um, 064 Meteor piston in it, uh, dual ring, I'm running both rings. The 064 piston is 17.31 pin to crown height. And I think the 440 piston is like 14.5, something like that. It's like somewhere around that range. So I had to take quite a bit of material out of the chamber. And then what I also did is on the piston, let me grab a piston. This is the one that actually came out of this 440. This is about 20 cords of wood that I cut on this piston. That's kind of the shape that it was in when I pulled it out. But what I did to the 064 piston, I was trying to reduce the weight a little bit. So on the exhaust side here, I just kind of uh, put it in the mill and just shaved a little bit off the uh, ex exhaust side here, just like that. Like, I don't know what angle I did. I just chucked it up in there and just uh, machined it off just a little bit to try to lower the compression a little bit because I felt like it had too much for, um, cutting firewood. It's got 205 pounds of compression. That's really about the limit, I think, for, well, this saw specifically with its cooling capacity. About 200, 205 pounds is really about as high as you can go if you're going to be cutting log after log after log. I mean, people who are cutting trees down, they're only cutting the trees down and limbing. Maybe they can get away with uh, more compression, which will give you a little bit more power, but in my case, this is as far as uh, as far as I wanted to go, so the saw doesn't overheat. 
It's got a, this is just a bike wrap for like a road bike. The, you know, the bike handles that have this, it's kind of like a, almost like a ram horn shape that people ride. Uh, so I wrapped this on here, got electrical tape on the ends. It's been holding up pretty good. I put this on here, one, because this handle was like kind of small versus, you know, some of these newer still or, you know, other still saws have a little bit bigger handle. So I put that on there for that to get a little bit better grip when I'm running it here in the summer when it's really hot. And then it also does dampen the vibration a little bit. This saw vibrates a good bit. It's probably my saw that vibrates the most. It's I would compare it to like an older saw, like one of the um, one of those pop metal type saws, you know, like uh, McCullough, Home Light, those, you know, 80s chainsaws. It kind of, it's more resembles that. But once I put this wrap on here, it's been a lot better. I think the vibration comes from the piston being a good bit heavier. I think it's like 15 or 20 grams heavier, even though I had to, I cut the intake skirt to get the intake duration that I wanted. And then I cut the exhaust skirt just enough so I didn't have to clearance the case. I was trying to lighten up the piston to get it closer to what the stock one was, but that was, uh, that was not successful at getting it quite to there. Um, I didn't do any, any work into the windows or anything like that. Um, I just raised the transfers. I didn't touch the lower transfers at all. I didn't, I didn't change the shape or size of the intake at all. The numbers are 102 exhaust, 78 intake, and 120 on the transfers on this one. The saw runs pretty good. Uh, I would say it's it's my fastest smaller wood saw. My 500i that's also ported is faster in wood that's more than 24 inches in diameter. But for the smaller trees, this is my fastest saw so far. I plan to do a another hybrid build. This one's going to be. It's going, I guess I can just tell you, it's going to be a 460, Farmer Tech 460 that I'm going to put a 660 big bore jug on it. So I already got the cylinder, already got the intake boot. I found an OEM one pretty cheap on eBay. This is a 460 big bore cylinder that I've just been kind of mocking up. I'm going to use a 661 piston. This seems to work. That's, I'm not going to take any material out of the chamber because that's, at, you know the piston dropped all the way down in there that's the uh, exhaust floor so I'm just gonna cut the base to get it to match the cut the base to get it to get the right squish and then probably gonna have to do some epoxy in the intake and you know change the whole intake shape and then rework these transfers and then definitely have to raise the exhaust a good bit this chamber is pretty flat for a, a Chinese cylinder but I figured I would try I would try this uh, setup and see, you know, what an 88cc 460 will do. See if it's going to be any faster than this one. This one's pretty fast uh, for, you know, an amateur porter like myself. Uh, so that's my upcoming project. There, you can kind of see. I think by the by the time I take about you know this much to that where that casting line is off the base, that'll be about where it needs to be and it should look pretty oem the exhaust on these are the same the spacing the bolt spacing is the same i might have to um you can see they're about the same height so i might have to do a little bit of adjusting on the muffler to get it the muffler to bolt up um the width here is the same so i'm not gonna have to clearance the case to put a 460 cylinder on a 044 you got to do quite a bit of clearancing here on the sides here you know, on both sides and you got to trim the fins a little bit i didn't trim any fins on the top i just uh cut the plastic underneath here cut all the little ribbing out i don't you don't need that so that's how i got this to sit on there it does have two little nuts that i drilled out as a spacer for the bigger cylinder but yeah i think that's uh pretty much it i'll, I'll show you the this is the muffler mod. At some point, I'm gonna throw a bark box on here as well. I don't know if, we'll see if that gives it any more power. Probably give it a little bit more because it's got that max flow, or I mean, that bark box has a pretty good size opening here. It's like about that big, about this wide. So at some point, I'll throw that on there. 
Um, once I get a little more money rounded up, I really want to try this hybrid project. That's kind of what I've been saving my money for. I've cleaned my work area up here. I threw in these two new, these are 45 inches deep drawers. So my porting stuff up here, chain stuff, porting tools. And this one down here, just got my other tools so they're not scattered all over my bench. Kind of trying to keep it a little more organized. But my my drawers are, this is 36 inch slides on them. I got those on Amazon. And then the drawers are 36 inches wide by 40, 45 inches long. So I can get a good amount of uh, stuff in them. That was the project that I got done here this weekend. That was a lot more difficult than what I thought it was going to be to do. It's probably about 60 screws in each of those, um, each of these drawers. So what I did is to keep these drawers rigid, since the, the slides are rated for like 260 pounds, there's never going to be 260 pounds in here. But what I did is I used these uh, little dividers out of just some scrap wood I had and then just screwed those in to keep this, uh, this plywood floor rigid since it's only a quarter inch thick. So that's kind of how I did that. I kind of cheated a little bit because I didn't really care what it looked like. I just drilled all the way through uh, all these so I could get the screws that hold these on perfect. I didn't really care if there was holes. I was just was trying to get this done as fast as possible so I can get back to doing uh, things that I'd rather be doing, right? Um, but yeah, so that's, uh, that's my little project that I got done this weekend. I'm planning to order this 460 this farmer tech 460 i guess in i don't know next couple weeks i've already got all the other parts that i need i just need the saw itself and then i'll be doing some porting and we'll see if that saw has more power than this one it should i'm gonna i'm gonna do i'm gonna go for more rpm i'd rather have the higher rpm saw maybe it'll be able to beat my 500i I'm going to do like 98, 97 on the exhaust roof, pretty short blowdown, and probably like 78 or something on the intake. That's kind of what I was thinking. Uh, it, it, I would say it would, it would be possible to put this, uh, this cylinder on a 440, but you would just have to do so much case clearancing. And let me show you a 440 cylinder. So the, the bolts are a little bit smaller. So that's all the other reason why I wanted to do the 460 case is a little bit wider. It accepts these a little bit wider transfers here. Um, and these are perfectly the same, you know, between these two. Like they, they perfectly line up. So I'm gonna do the 460. I don't really care if it's a little bit heavier. I think the 440s look better, but for this project, I'm gonna do the 460 as the base for this uh, hybrid build should be i think 88 cc's so 76 to 88 this one's i think are 76 and a half i think that's what it is 76 and a half and then that one will be 88 the piston well, i'm thinking about it i don't think i'm gonna have to do anything to the case itself any case clearancing because let me slide this in here so you can see that the 661 piston's actually a little bit shorter on the bottom of the skirt. And, you know, since the 661 piston's a lot taller, I it should help with the 40 millimeter stroke that the 660 has versus the 36 that the 440 or 460 has. So yeah, so that's uh, gonna be an upcoming project. Uh, stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching.